99% finance professionals use too many spreadsheets, too many links, circular references everywhere. But the worst part is that assets do not equal liabilities plus equity, and we need to catch the differences all the time. Let's fix that and make your model tie, every period. Here is what you will get. How to build the 10 must-have forecast components every financial planning and analysis team needs from revenue and margins through equity. How to assemble the entire model into a clean, auditable three-statement engine. How to protect accuracy and quality with simple scenario logic, timing controls, and reconciliation checks that catch errors before they become board slides. Before we start, we must understand the macro and micro indicators that influence our business. We also need a clear view of our business acumen and strategy. Finally, we must define our revenue drivers and sales channels. Revenue and margins. Revenue sets the tempo for everything else. Headcount, working capital, capital expenditures, debt capacity, and more. Margins tell you whether growth is creating value or just creating volume. Build the revenue engine first, then margins. Choose your structure and link all income streams. For a distributor or a multi-line business, begin with revenue by product or category. For a service business, begin with revenue by service line or customer. In this example, we are building a forecast based on the expected growth rate. Naturally, to estimate that rate, we first had to conduct various analyses and apply forecasting methods such as trend analysis, time series analysis, industry expert analysis, and more. If the business has stable cost behavior, you can forecast gross profit by choosing the best estimated gross margin percentage per stream and let the model calculate cost of goods sold as revenue minus gross profit. The following example demonstrates the EPN methodology. By this approach, revenue is projected by analyzing existing pipeline and new customer segments independently. Existing customers forecast by account based on known demand, renewal behavior, and planned upsell or cross-sell. Pipeline, list opportunities and apply a win probability per stage and a realistic close month. New to firm customers use historical offer coverage and conversion to estimate a prudent base. Finally, add a consistency check. If less than half of the next period's forecast comes from existing customers, flag the base case as aggressive. The following approach is the so-called units times price method. We list all products, project the quantities, then project the prices, and finally arrive at the revenues. Units are driven by pipeline, win rates, renewal rates, usage, or capacity. Price comes from list price, discount ladders, and indexation. Mix is the share of each product or customer segment and often explains most year-over-year -year movement. In addition to these models, we have model recurring revenue, subscriptions, maintenance, usage, with churn, expansion, and price uplift, and other models. Payroll. You can choose employee level forecasting for precision or group level for scale. Employee level. Each person in a row with role, location, start date, end date if known, base salary, bonus accrual rule, employer tax and benefits percentage, and utilization, for example, 100% for a full year, 50% if starting mid-year. Do not forget timing, prorate compensation by start month and payroll cycle. Accrue bonuses monthly, but show cash payout in the selected months, so the cash flow statement reflects reality. If you want group-level based forecasting, just include departments or grades with average salary, expected headcount change, planned raise percentage, turnover, and skill premiums. Finally, you can do reasonableness checks. Payroll growth compared with revenue growth, bonus expense accrued versus cash actually paid, headcount compound growth aligned to the hiring plan you can defend. If you want all of these Excel models in Excel, join my full financial modeling course at my website. The link is below the video. Operating expenses. Map each cost to its best forecasting method. Fixed expenses such as rent and insurance, straight line with contractual escalators and inflation. For warehousing, model square meters times rate rather than a single plug. 
Variable expenses such as marketing, travel, and payment processing. Percentage of revenue or percentage of the relevant activity driver like gross merchandise value or number of orders. Recurring expenses such as subscriptions and utilities, contract tables with start and end dates, seat counts, indexation, and renewal cliffs. Contractual expenses under service agreements, copy terms into the schedule and model step-ups and minimums explicitly. Non-recurring items separate and dated so they do not contaminate the run rate. So here is all logic. Segment, review three to five years of history, apply the correct method per category and install small scenario toggles for the few assumptions that matter. Accounts receivable. There are two standard approaches. Medium term approach using day sales outstanding. You need a revenue forecast and an assumption for day sales outstanding produce the receivables balance. Add a simple selector for optimistic base and pessimistic days to understand the liquidity effect. Monthly roll forward approach. Opening receivables plus new sales minus cash collected from current buckets minus cash collected from new sales minus write-offs equals ending receivables. This is perfect for the monthly cash meeting and for stress testing collection plans. Always show a line labeled cash effect from receivables movement under the table. Nothing clarifies the importance of collection discipline faster than seeing the cash impact of a five-day slip. Inventories. Pick the method that matches your horizon and data. Scenario-based days inventory outstanding. Use cost of goods sold and days inventory outstanding with up and down scenarios to produce the balance and the cash implication. Component method. Separate raw materials, work in progress, and finished goods. Assign a days on hand assumption to each and adjust for lead times and production cycles. Monthly roll forward. Opening inventory plus purchases minus cost of goods sold minus write downs equals ending inventory. This is the most reconcilable for the month end. At the end, just cross check that the inventory plan is consistent with supplier lead times, purchase order cadence, production yields, and capacity. Accounts payable. Again, two approaches. Simple approach for quarterly or annual plans. Combine cost of goods sold and vendor paid operating expenses. Apply days payable outstanding and compute the balance. Use a scenario switch for terms tightening or extension. Monthly direct approach. Opening payables plus purchases minus payments of prior liabilities minus payments of new liabilities equals ending payables. I would also advise you maintain a vendor terms table. For example, 2% discount if paid in 10 days with net 30 versus net 45. And compute the return on early pay discounts versus the company's cost of capital. Net working capital. Adjusted net working capital equals current assets excluding cash minus current liabilities excluding short-term financial debt. Pull accounts receivable, inventories, and accounts payable from their detailed tabs. Project other operating current assets and liabilities as a percentage of revenue if you lack explicit drivers. The change in adjusted net working capital flows into the cash flow statement. An increase uses cash, a decrease provides cash. Ensure definitions are consistent across history and forecast so your bridges make sense. Capital expenditures and depreciation. Ratio method. If property, plant and equipment as a share of revenue is stable in history, you can project the carrying value using that ratio and compute depreciation as a percentage by class. When we have the final figure, we only need to allocate it across the projects manually, based on the best possible estimate. Needs-based method. Collect a realistic investment plan from functions. Stage it across periods, then calculate depreciation by asset class and policy. Investment and useful life method. Build an asset table with cost, salvage value, useful life, and in-service date. Use the end of month function to calculate end of use dates and monthly depreciation. Carry forward opening accumulated depreciation and reconcile to the carrying value. 
Cash from investing activities should equal your capital expenditure outflows. Additions, disposals and depreciation must tie to the fixed asset role. You can download all these models in Excel in my full financial modeling course at my website. See the link below the video. Debt. Here we have several schedules such as the cash sweep, revolver, senior debt and mezzanine. Cash sweep and revolver logic. Start with opening cash, operating cash flow and investing cash flow from your core model. Reserve a minimum cash buffer. The remainder is available cash. Pay mandatory debt service first. Apply the sweep percentage to any remaining discretionary cash. If the sweep amount is positive, reduce the revolver. If there is a shortfall, draw the revolver to keep operations funded. Track undrawn fees on the remaining revolver capacity and always check against the maximum facility limit. Senior loan schedule. Beginning balance minus mandatory paydowns minus discretionary paydowns plus new borrowings equals ending balance. Verify that the ending balance of the current period equals the beginning balance of the next period. Mezzanine and payment in kind interest. Beginning balance plus payment in kind interest minus paydowns plus new borrowings equals ending balance. Interest schedule. Calculate interest using average balances times the applicable rate, including spreads and fees. For existing loans, you may pull interest directly from amortization attachments and add interest for new borrowings based on your assumptions. Equity. Track two areas cleanly. Retained earnings, opening balance plus net income minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. Share capital and additional paid-in capital. Add issuances and reduce for buybacks. If the company plans management options or restricted stock units, maintain a simple share movement table that aligns to earnings per share on the income statement. Link it all. The three statement model. Here is final model with the projected income statement, balance sheet and cash flow statement. Do not perform calculations on the summary sheet. Just pull values from the support tabs. Freeze a header row with checks, cash tie and balance equality. Pull revenue from the revenue tab and gross profit from the margin logic or cost of goods sold build. All expenses come from the operating expense tab. Then pull all assets lines in the balance sheet from relevant tabs. Pull accounts receivable, inventories and other current assets from the net working capital tab and so on. Build a cash flow statement using the indirect method. Start with net income. Add back non-cash items such as depreciation and amortization. Adjust for changes in working capital components. Investing activities reflect capital expenditures and asset sales. Financing activities reflect debt draws and repayments, equity issuances and repurchases and dividend payments. Add operating, investing and financing cash flows to get the change in cash. Feed ending cash back to the balance sheet. When total assets equal total liabilities plus equity and the cash tie check reads zero, the model is reconciled. This was the brief version. For deep dives, case studies and ready to use Excel templates, enroll in my financial modeling course at my website. The link is below the video. If you want the most innovative approach to modeling, watch my next video on building a full model with AI tools outside Excel and subscribe to my channel.